are heading to the little town of Yendekeil. It's about a 47 kilometer drive from Riedlinghuis and it's Star Road all the way. But it's another one of those little towns that I saw on Google Maps which looks very intriguing. So couldn't come to this area and not want to explore. No, I do remember you and I maybe late one Sunday afternoon took a drive past or through the village. Oh really? I yes. can't even remember that. But we didn't explore so yeah it'll be cool to see. Yes. got a cute name this farm store. What is it called? I want to hear you read it with your English tongue. Skrik van rondom padstel. What does that mean? <laughs> no I don't know. I think someone was called Skrik. <laughs> skrik van rondom is like get a fright from all sides. <laughs> Look at the emus. Yes. And, and cattle. cattle yeah. Wow. Kruk van rondom. I see bulldog.
I have to go and check out this emu. Hello. Hey. There's such nice places to sit underneath here. I like the rustic vibe here. It's a beautiful place, eh? Yeah. The people put in so much into these areas, eh? Shows how much they believe in their places, eh? And if I look at the size of it, I'm sure they get a lot of visitors. Holiday season and... Floral season. Yeah. So, yeah, I love the unfinished concrete floor. <laughs> that just adds to the charm for me. It does. And the bathrooms are spotless. That's, that's so good to see. On to Ian de Coyle. Let's go. We couldn't get behind the name. No. Skrik van Rondom. Skrik van Rondom, ja. <laughs> it must be someone was called Skrik. Or is called Skrik. There's a bridge approaching. Yes, ma'am. Can we check on your map what river this is? Okie dokes. Now, let me check quickly. Okay. So, <laughs> We've just come across a confluence over here. Yeah? Yes. From that side, coming down there, is the Verloren Vlei River. Okay, which we followed. Yes, which yes. we followed, yes. Right. Then it splits into two. That way, down that way, is the Krom Antonis River. What Krom Antonis River. Okay. And th down this way is the Kreismans River. So we're going to cross the Kreismans now. We're going to cross the Kreismans. Super interesting. Very. Let's see if there's a gate. 1951. 1951. Crazy. It's quite long ago, eh? Yeah, it doesn't seem to be much water at the moment, but it's only the start of our rainy season in the Western Cape. Yes. That's interesting. Very cool. I can we imagine what it looks like when these rivers are flowing, eh? We love a confluence. Yep. This little guy was crossing the road and we couldn't stop. There was a vehicle behind us and we turned back just to come and make sure he made it over and he did. Yeah. He is tiny. I'd say 10 centimeters. He made it. Good going little fella. Bye. Just all the orange little dots. <laughs> Lots here too, eh? Yes. Hey? What are they? Oranges? They look like notches. They're too Just small. See. Yeah, they're too small for oranges. Can I just tell you that something dawned on me? What? For the, for the first time now. That it's called the Sandfeld because it's sandy soil. <laughs> yes. Honestly, I only realized that now. Well, if you have a look at this, this is so sandy here. Yeah? And it has been for some time. Yet they grow these incredible citrus crops here. Yeah. In the kale. First sign we've seen of it. Yes. And it's a left. Yes, ma'am. Vineyards too. Yes. She goes mountains. Oh, aren't they gorgeous? Is it a bit hazy? It is hazy, yeah. That's a rail track. 
There is. Wait a second. Wait a second. I have to go in here before we go into Indicator. Yes, the answer is yes. Thank you. Silos. Where there are silos. Oh, it's a big fat one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the others are much skinnier. Where there are silos, there are very often train lines. Kitty cat. Oh, station kitty cat. Yes. You see the boards? Yes, they're the boards. Are no, 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 don't make us if you saw them first. <laughs> oh, wow. The heron. Look at the herons. Take us right up the platform. I'm going to do that. Boards are facing the other way. Yeah. Railway houses? Yes. It looks like someone's using this place. That's fantastic. You mean maybe for storage or something? Oh, yeah. It's got a lock on everything. Oh, I see. Brilliant. Corrugated iron building. Yes. Oh, there's one too. Yes, totally yeah. overgrown. Oh. In the kale. Look at this one. It's overgrown. You can't really see much on the name. I take a walk down like this and have a look. Oh, that building seems abandoned. Corrugated iron. No doors and stuff. A lot of the tracks have been removed. You can see there's a track that used to go down the side. But that's taken out. Yes, in the kale. Just there's a lot of broken bottles here, so I have to watch my step. You can see over here. Tracks was coming in here yeah, and then they just got cut out and removed all gone down here yeah. so I think there where that station name board is and then if you look along here to where this station name board is here in the bush there must have been a station building in between the two names because like a ticket office and the passengers got on and off. I'm sure that's where the ticket office was. 
Now I wonder if that was the lunchtime bell. Or when the railway workers were here. Tea time, lunchtime. That bell used to go off. And then check the original light fittings. You don't see this very often. As with so many other uh, small towns, the info online hasn't been updated in a long time. Oh, for sure. So some of what, I'm going to read it as I find it, but some of it has to be put in past tense. It says that the village was the terminus of the Cape Town Railway until the end of the Anglo-Boer War. Wow. And it remains the railhead for the Citrus Dole region which lies on the other side of the Olifants River. So clearly yeah. that's not the case anymore. I didn't know what a railhead was, do you? No, I don't know. A railhead is a point on a railway from which roads and other transport routes begin. Okay. So that was the, it was the start of it. Okay, before you carry on, just look at this light. Oh, no way! Yeah. Look, there's several left. Yeah. And there's herons on top of the one. Wow, I love how many of the original fittings still remain. Yes. Yeah, thanks for showing me that. Okay, carry on, sorry. All right, so with the next bit, everything has to be changed to past tense. Okay. Unfortunately. The major function of Kale is as a small rail center. And despite its size, it plays a significant role in the citrus industry as the station closest to the farms around Citrus Dole. Almost due west of Kale, give or take a mountain pass. <laughs> yes. So the number of houses indicated to me that it was quite a busy place. Definitely. This confirms it. Yeah, for sure. 
The number of those railway houses definitely made me think it was a bigger place. No more, sadly. Unfortunately not. I see a lot of the tracks have even been removed. I mean, we saw so many citrus orchards on our way yes. here. It played a big role. The railways even played a big role in the citrus industry. Yep. In the area. Sadness. Okay, let's see if we can get into the town now. <laughs> In the Kyle, uh, an ent is a duck. Yes. Kyle, I honestly don't know how to translate. Online, I see they say duck shelter. In my opinion, that's not correct. No. Isn't the kale that something on the head? No, that's a K E I L. Oh, that's okay. a hat, yes. What would that black thing be? That's like a, a steam, part of a steam locomotive. Yes, right? Definitely. That's definitely part of a steam loco. So a little bit more of the rail history of Endercale. Yes. That's the other side of the silos. Can we turn down there? Yes. I just want to show you a building I saw from the station. Just from the outside. Looks quite beautiful, the gable. Oh, that must have been the station master's house. Well, Definitely. that would make sense. Yeah, that's the station master's house. <laughs> or the station foreman's house. I think this one's the station foreman. <laughs> that was the station master. This one doesn't have a gable. The master's had a gable. <laughs> this is their co-op. They have fuel pumps. Quiet little place. Yeah, it's funny the election boards don't miss any little place, eh? No. No, no, no. Petrol is 24 Rand 96 a litre today. Diesel 22 Rand? 71. Oh, well, it's a general dealer. Yeah. Liquor store? This looked like an important building. Office. I wonder what that could have been. Yeah. I think we're getting to the railway houses there. Yes. We spotted a very faded blackened sign almost, which I'm desperate to go and see if we can read. Let's go down. I'm sure it's this road. There it is. Yes. These are definitely railway houses. No doubt. And quite a few of them for a town this small. Yes. Yes, you're bored. On a railway track? Oh, no through fair. Trespassers will be prosecuted. Okay. Look, it's also like those indented letters yes. like the railway like boards. Cost. Yeah. That's definitely a railway sign. Is our good shit. Yeah, we were just there. Oh, it's got the teeniest oranges or lemons. <laughs> I think they know all thick skinned lemons. They're the teeniest ones. Look, they've just fixed this um, stormwater drainage through underneath the road. Mm. It looks like it's just been laid a new pipe and now they've cemented this where it pours the water out. It's good, they work on the infrastructure. That's great. I wonder if this is not the police station. It might be. I don't know, it might be the detective branch down there, but yes. just the Indicale Primary School. Cute. Oh, there are police, police vehicles everywhere. Oh no, okay. No, now I'm confused. Tennis court? Netball court. Police vehicles only. Yeah, this is the, the police, police station. station. Yes. Look 
Community Service Centre. And the municipality, Bergrevier municipality. And I saw a mobile clinic vehicle. Okay. Definitely visible policing in the area. Many vehicles yeah. driving around. Okay, I wonder if it's not a school. We're coming up to a fence, you might be able to peep through. It's just a sports yeah. facility. That's all it is, sports grounds. It's fantastic though. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Look how nice the field looks, nice and green. something. It smells like coffee or tea. Oh! Cape Rooibos! I wanted to say I smell tea. Hey! <laughs> That's insane. I'm serious. I didn't know this was here. It smelled like tea. Well, you are a rooibos lover. Yes. So you should know the smell. I also smell it now, but I didn't smell it earlier. Yeah. Interesting yeah. with Table Mountain as their logo. <laughs> <laughs> coffee no. I, I knew it was a familiar smell and then I realized now it's more tea than coffee. We can drive right in. Yes. Interesting design. Yeah. This is one we've not seen one quite like this before. No, we have not. I wonder if that's the hall. It's pretty neat, eh? Very neat. I wonder if that for me comes first. I'm sure it does. Because look at it, it looks like it's stone that's hammered stone that's been painted. I wanted to say it, but I wasn't sure. Let me go and take a closer look. Investigate. Yes, ma'am. Let me first investigate this one. Oh, for sure. 28th of the 9th, 1935. Definitely. Definitely hammered stone. And this came later, this cornerstone was laid on the 29th of July, 1961. So that, I'm sure that was the first church building and then they're using it as the church hall now. And this is the other, the later church building. Oh, 
Whoa. This is so interesting. Really different. parking area for the congregation over there wow loads of birds love it and just the memory wall Beautiful flowers. I can smell them. Oh, these are roses. Yeah. Oof, they smell absolutely stunning. Look at this perfect rose here. Yeah. You've got a point there that those, that church hall now, which was built in 35, 1935, that is so uniform, those stones, but it's definitely stone, but it must have been machined. It's just too uniform for yeah. me to be hand hammered or chiseled or hewn, whatever it's called. But I must say, it's actually fantastic that they did that in 1935 so we believe that was the first church I right? definitely first church and then they built this one in 61 and this became their church hall oh beautiful cornerstone too yeah yeah love it nice neat garden very neat something worries me yes I need to go and figure out what that was that I said was the police station we can, can we go, do that? We can go down there now. I think we just saw a police vehicle there. Maybe he lives there. Maybe he dropped off his child from school. You never know. Perhaps. Like these might be the detectives here. Yeah? yeah, these I think are definitely officers. Yes. So I presume that you thought this was the police station. I think it's the police barracks. I see washing, yes. satellite dishes, oh, curtains, for sure, yeah. I would agree. Yep. Well, they might have taken them over as police barracks, but it might have been um, single quarters for the station, people who worked at the station, and now the police have taken it over because it looks too much like a railway building to me. And it's too close. Too close. It's right next door. Yes. That makes sense. Now this must have been the entrance to the old church. Oh, we were at the back side yes. of it. And this is where the congregants park. Plenty of parking. For sure. I'm not sure if this is correct, but I see something about the Olifant River Mountains. I'm not sure if those are them. That is under correction. Okay. Well, those are definitely mountains. <laughs> That's not under correction. Okay, I'll play my game with you. Yes. In 2011. 312. Oh, in an area 
of 0.85 square kilometers. Oh no, that's a lot more then. Is that 2,000? 1,530. Okay. I, I don't know that it's many more, to be no. honest. It's quite pretty with a thatch. Yes. 1995. That's new. People still came to settle in Endercale. Oh, look at all this. Yeah. These, what are they? Oh, forklifts. So many. <laughs> the little ponies. Oh, mommy. Small, eh? Just taller than the sheep. Yes. <laughs> Cute. Bergrevier. Fire and rescue vehicle. Yep. Toki? What does it say? Toki Savunkel? Yeah. yeah. Toki, Toki. Shop. <laughs> 1997. So it shows you in the late 90s still folks came to invest in Eendekale. Yeah. Tukki Savunko. She got the shoes. Come and sit here and have a cup of coffee. Switzerland, 12,604 kilometers. Cape Town, 161 kilometers. London, 13,023 kilometers. New York, 12,514. Dorsch Kersbos, 110. Apparently in flower season this place looks amazing.
cappuccino, coffee, and tea. And this is Tokisa Winkles weather station. If the rock is wet, it's raining. If the rock is cool, it's overcast. If the rock is hot, it's sunny. If the rock is moving, it's windy. <laughs> and then it's very windy. Oh boy. If you can't see the rock at night, <laughs> if the rock is missing, it got stolen. <laughs> Interesting, the day we, uh, they started the shop and they built it on, it used to be just this building. Is this in 1997 now? You're around about there, yeah. All been right. been here for 30 years now, yeah. So this was the shop first and then they built all of this onto it. And um, his father-in-law owned it. The father-in-law registered the shop under her, his mother-in-law's name and she was Toki. She was Toki. Yes. And they thought, well, it's such a nice name. They just kept the name Toki Savanko. And now he's known as Wumtok. <laughs> <laughs> and his name is probably nowhere near no, Toko no, Toki. No, no. That's a cute story. Yeah, is, eh? But you should see, they've got a small little photo there. I couldn't have, it's too dark to take a picture of, of just what this looked like. They've really done well here. Yeah. Love the stories we get to hear. Yes. <laughs> in these little places and to see that they're still going is yes. very heartwarming because i'm i was reading while you were inside and it seems like there are quite a few stories of has-beens in ian de Kale. okay like one of them is once upon a time ian de Kale produced fairly good cheeses at its zebras corp cooperative cheese factory but several cheese factory mergers later, it no longer functions and locals get most of their work on citrus farms in the area. Oh, okay. So it looks like they employed a, a lot of people as well. Boy, that's what happens to most of these little towns, eh? It's all about employment because if they can't earn a living, they have to look elsewhere. Exactly. That's why I say it's not always necessarily so that the population has increased since a few no. years ago. It's because wow, the, look at but the tractors, eh? The undercall is the tractor and the forklift capital. Oh, I found, I think, the best word to translate kale to. Yes. Pool. So I would go for duck pool. Kale, is it like a little pond? Yes. Okay, I didn't know that. So I was looking online and pool is I think the closest. Right, yo. Let's see what else we can find in duck pool. Yes. <laughs> now you can see this is where they come with their citrus. So this is probably a pack house. Yep. Right opposite this this farmland. Definitely. Citrio! <laughs> I wonder what Citrio grows. Or packs rather. Another thing we find super interesting, eh? Yes. The picking and the packing of fruit. Fruit. It's crazy, though. What a it's, huge industry it is. It's like a hectic time of the year when they're packing fruit, eh? Well, picking we've been lucky packing. enough to see it a few times. Yes. Now, if I think of just how many lemons, let me focus on lemons, me, as in I consume. Yes. And everyone in the country must consume tons and tons and tons and tons and tons. Let alone to all the other places they export to. It's a quiet, peaceful town for oh, me. Nice. 
It's so nice to just drive around and not worry about traffic. Yes. I think a lot more happened here back in the day. Oh, for sure. When the railway was still working, I think it must have been a bustling little place. There's neat houses here, I must be honest. Yes, I agree. Look at this. Gardens are maintained. I don't think you saw them, but I even saw quiver trees because not all the gardens have lawns. Yes. So quiver trees are the perfect plants. One of your favorites. I love a quiver tree. We came here, but we never went up this road. So I just want to see what we can find further along. Seen quite a few more of those no thoroughfare signs. Yes. Which means this was all the station precinct. Definitely. People couldn't just come and drive through. And this was definitely station related. Oh, there's nothing happening here. Yeah, I saw when I was walking here, the doors are gone and stuff. It's abandoned, yeah. Do you want to take a quick peek inside? Yeah, let me see. Oh, this was a braai. Now I wonder what this was. Must have had something to do with the railway. So do you think this is where you came to park? If you wanted to board a train? I just want to see if I can figure out what, what this was. Looks more like it was a residence. Someone lived here, yeah, it was a kitchen. This was a bathroom. right by the railway station. I presume this must have been railway related and a residence because there's a bathroom and a kitchen so it must have been a house someone lived here. And it's directly behind where we suspect the main station building was. Yes. And there's like a concrete slab so I think you're right the main station building was broken down altogether. Yes. And this is the back side of the station name. Yes. I'm all for a little drive along the tracks. Yes. Concrete sleepers. No, I can't go any further than this. All right. But it's not all doom and gloom for Ian Kale. Online, and I'm not sure how current it is, it says Winkel's Hook Wine Cellar, producing wine from its farms, Schenkfontein and Klipperfeer, is worth a stop to sample their brandy and wines. Okay. So it looks like 
you know, there is definitely still industry. We saw a lot of um, citrus. Yep. Uh, we just don't do brandy in our house. Thank mm. you very much. <laughs> and we're not big wine drinkers. So for those who are, and there are many, might be a place to visit. Definitely. You know, I saw the motto of the primary school is we stand together. Okay. On stone Psalm. So yeah. beautiful. Yes. And that'll be my lasting impression of Yendakale. I think time left the little settlement behind a bit. Yep. But the folks who are there stand together. But it's very neat and clean and tidy. And you look at that uh, Tokisa Winkle. It's beautiful. And the church looks awesome. Everything around there, the town streets are clean and neat. And the people's properties are nice. So I, I think it's fantastic. I love Yendakale. Very happy that uh, we came to explore the Indica. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and we'll see you in the next episode.